there were eight. Welcome, everybody, as we continue on our fifth season of the NCRA Pizza Hut X Series, getting ready to go racing for round number two, race number one of the chase for the championship here at the high banks of Talladega Super Speedway. Last week, we were at the Auto Club Speedway, and we had our first four eliminations from this season's chase for the championship, those being Nick Gunther, Patrick Curtis, Quentin Moore, and Austin LaPlante. It leaves us now with eight drivers that will battle here in this second round, starting here at Talladega. Then we'll see them in a couple of weeks at Texas and the final elimination race to determine our final four at Rockingham, North Carolina. Talladega, definitely a monster unto itself. It can certainly shake up the points. And of course, as well, a lot of these drivers here that still have the Pizza Hut X Series Chase banners would love to be able to see the checkered flag and know that they can head into Homestead Miami Speedway knowing they will be one of the four representatives battling for this season's championship. But on the flip side, there's 34 other drivers in this field that also want to go to victory lane. You got lined up on the front row. A couple of rookies there. Rob Evans, our winner from Atlanta. His win, though, not high enough in the point standings to get him into a playoff position. He'd love to, as a rookie, be the first two-time winner this season as a rookie and join Eli Bright as the only multi-time winner this season. Alongside of him, Andrew Gonzalez, a couple of times he's been close to going to victory lane. The I guess the best one was back at Richmond, but uh, he's still looking for his first win of his career as he lines Brothers. up in second Stop your engine command is given it'll be 29 laps here today which with that uneven number of laps could be a very important scheduled distance because these drivers if we manage to go green the entirety of this race they may have to pit not just once but maybe in the closing stages of this race making this a very important fuel strategy race we're yet to see the big one break out we had the last of a slight series here yesterday but uh, there was no wrecks in that race we'll see if we see our first caution of the weekend here today let's take a look at our top 10 in the point standings well not our top 10 but our top eight you can see them on the right side of your screen eli bright two wins in the first round winning the uh chase opener at las vegas and then winning last week at auto club speedway i mean we had what was it a span of about 13 14 races with 13 or 14 different race winners and then just like that we've got a three-time winner in eli bright that win at las vegas automatically locked him into this round of the playoffs and he ended up getting an extra three bonus points towards this round of the playoffs with his win at Auto Club. So he has a six-point advantage over the remaining chase drivers, Phil Parker, Diego Yepes, Zach Flickinger, Cat Bats, and James Shelley, Elijah Gilbert, and Juan Garcia, who just barely got in over Nick Gunther last week. It was a very close battle between those two for the final spot in the Elite Eight. Highest starting playoff driver will be Phil Parker rolling off from the third position. Diego Yepes rolling off from the high side of row three in sixth. And I don't really see any other of our uh, playoff contenders, at least up towards the top 15. But it's a big track. It's very easy with the draft to work your way from the back to the front. So we may see some of them work their way up here momentarily. I see a couple of drivers mid-pack there. Juan Garcia, James Shelley, Zach Flickinger, and Elijah Gilbert. We'll see if they work their way up here towards the front sooner rather than later. And of course, if this thing goes green, we're going to definitely see pit strategy. We're going to see a lot of drivers wheeling and dealing. Hey, if I come to pit road this lap, will you come with me? We're going to have to see what happens here. And Talladega always seems to cater to the underdog. The driver struggling in points. Will that hold true here today? Rob Evans, Andrew Gonzalez, a couple of rookie stripes will lead us down. Green flags in the air. Let's roll at Talladega. Gonzalez got a good start, and he's going to clear around the outside for the top position. Rob Evans gets stuck in the middle. Phil Parker's going to move by for second. Brooke Allen going to try and move by for third place, and she will succeed in doing so. Evans, I don't think, got going on that start, and he's paying the price for it. Talladega reliant on draft, and so as such, it is a very big momentum track. You let off the throttle just a little bit, everyone's going to freight train you. You want to stay in the throttle as much as possible. Keep that forward momentum going. And speaking of momentum, we got some cars with momentum into the wall. We got a wreck there in turn three. A lot of cars involved, it looks like. Our first caution, it didn't take long. Lap one. 
Phil Parker trying to take the lead. He'd love to get a bonus point for leading a lap against Andrew Gonzalez. Don't know if he's quite gonna get there. No, he's not. I think Gonzalez got him at the line. Well, Parker is up here. Yepes is up here. And I think I also saw Zach Flickinger, but that wreck took place close to the front of the field. And I almost wonder how many playoff drivers might have been involved in this one early on at Talladega. James Shelley got through, it looks like. Elijah Gilbert appears to have gotten through, so at least five of our player contenders. Juan Garcia as well, so six of them. So that means where in the world are the other two, Eli Bright and Kat Batson? Did they get through it? There's Jessica Miles. She was involved. Nathan Hudson, a lot of damage after he had a good run at Auto Club last week. LaPlante, who just got recently eliminated from the playoffs. Mason Wood, they're wrecking each other further up here. There's the 22 of Kat Batson. Just saw her get into the back of Daniel Olson. I can't tell how much damage that 22 car has got, if any. She is way back here, though. Lost a lot of track position. We'll have to probably rely on the replay to see how much damage she got, if she was involved at all. Front end damage on the front of Kyle Langland. I don't see the 02 of Eli Bright. As it looks like Garrett Sidner was involved. Ying Canario was in it. There's Bright, and he was involved. Two wins in the first round of the playoffs. First lap of round two, and he's got damage. It looks like just about everybody's coming to pit road. About four cars are staying out, including the 12 of Jake Rogers. It's like all Ford staying out. Rogers, Rowe, Yepes, and Erickson. 19 of Yepes, a playoff contender. Interesting strategy here as everybody else hits the pit lane. So we'll take a look at a replay. What brought out the first caution of the weekend? It's lap number one here at Talladega. First yellow of the day. Up around a battle for maybe seventh, eighth, just inside the top ten. That's Wyatt Quayle in the 62, locking doors with Jay Jefferson, a former winner here at Talladega. Sends him up into the wall, into Jessica Miles. Ying Canario, absolutely nowhere to go. And for the most part, most of these drivers kept it up on the top side of the racetrack. Little con oh, not, not a little, a lot of contact there for Daniel Olsen. There's Carter Friesen, Charles Jackson. There's where Eli Bright got involved. He ran into the 39. LaPlante there. There's Cat Batson. Uh, looks like she might have made a little contact there with the four of Ryan George. You see Miles up and over flipping. Gene Sanford just barely gets through it, I think. Quentin Moore might have made it through. Cole Deaver got a piece of the wreck there, as did Nathan Hudson. You can see him back behind the flipping 25. And there's the 22 of Batson. I don't think she got a whole lot of damage. She did make contact with the passengers, or I'm sorry, the driver's side door, rather, of the four of Ryan George, but I don't think she got a whole lot of damage. Eli Bright did, though. He got some pretty good front-end damage after he got into the uh, side of Carter Friesen. And actually, there's not nearly as much damage right there as there was before. He might have gotten involved in a stack-up under caution. Take a couple onboards with two of our playoff contenders that I think got a piece of this wreck. Starting first with our points leader, Eli Bright. most part got through that pretty well. Got a little contact there with the uh, left rear of the spinning car to freeze it, but for the most part got through it pretty well. I think that he got most of his damage from a stack up. And now the 22 of Cat Bats to see how much damage she really got. Yeah, if she made any contact with Ryan George, it was very minimal. So she did a pretty doggone good job there and almost got into Austin the plan as well. So nice avoidance by the driver of the 22. Lights are out atop the pace car. We'll get ready to go back green. Top four drivers stayed out under that caution. So Jake Rogers inherits the lead. Teammates uh, Alexander Rowe, Diego Yepes line up second and third. And Chloe Erickson lines up in fourth. Phil Parker was the first of the drivers to pit. Um... Well, actually, he was the second of the drivers to pit. He comes out first, so he'll restart in fifth. Brooke Allen, sixth. Rob Evans, seventh. Juan Garcia, eighth. Andrew Gonzalez in ninth. 
and Matt McIntyre will complete the top 10. Good news for the playoff drivers in this race is the worst they can finish here today is 34th as we have a total of eight drivers already out of this event including Garrett Sitton, or actually no, I'm sorry, one of our playoff drivers is actually out of the race. So for the seven remaining playoff drivers, worst they can finish is 34th. This Garrett Sidner's out along with Wyatt Quayle. Eli Bright, not the way he wanted to start off this round, came in the points leader. He'll finish 37th in the first race of the second round. Yin Canario also out along with Mason Wood, Nathan Hudson, Jessica Miles, and Ryan George. So where are remaining seven playoff drivers restarting? Well, we know Diego Yepes stayed out and restarts in third. Phil Parker restarts in fifth. Juan Garcia in eighth. Zach Flickinger in 12th, Elijah Gilbert 16th, James Shelley 17th. Uh, Got to go down a ways before you find Kat Batson. She's restarting in 27th. And that is it for our playoff contenders that are still running. So Eli Bright, boy, that team's got a lot of work to do in the upcoming weeks. If they're going to make it into the final four. So we know that with coming to pit road when they did, that drivers that restarted fifth on back, they'll be able to at least go one to maybe two more laps extra on fuel than drivers Rogers, Rowe, Yepes, and Erickson. And I find it really interesting that Diego Yepes rolled the dice there and decided to stay out, especially with the fact he's battling for a chance to make it into the final four to compete for a championship. A lot of people forget that because we're uh, still, you know, only about a third of the way through the playoffs for the Hershey's Cup Series drivers that in this series, now in this round, you win a race, you are going to battle for the championship in the final four. We're down to our final eight. We're determining our final four now in this series. Alexander Rowe is going to go to the race lead in the 69 car. I was actually looking back at former winners here at Talladega. Surprising as it is, only one driver is a former winner of this event that's in this field. And the ironic thing is, they are no longer in this field. They are back in the garage area, and that's the car that we saw flipping down in turn three, Jessica Miles. She was the defending winner of this race. The other former winners of this event, seasons one through three, Jeffrey Finguy, Charlie Buxton, and Glenn Duhit. Finn Guy drove the number 20 Toyota Camry in Season 1. Buxton drove the number 7 Chevrolet in Season 2. And Glenn Dewitt drove the number 6 Ford in Season 3. So how ironic is that? Three different manufacturers winning in the first three seasons. Miles, of course, her Chevrolet winning last year. Highest running playoff driver now is going to be Juan Garcia. you got to think maybe last week's race... At Auto Club was a bit of an awakening for that team of, hey, we got to finish better and not have ourselves in that kind of a position when we head into uh, the next elimination race at Rockingham. James Shelley up here now as well in the 71. Zach Flickinger, Phil Parker. So you got a lot of your playoff contenders up towards the front of the field right now, 50% of them. Diego Yepes not too far back behind these guys. Juan Garcia, Flickinger, Parker, and Shelley would all like to get to the front of the field and lead a lap here, get that extra bonus point in their pocket. All these drivers gonna make up some big ground on those six bonus points Eli Bright had coming into this race due to the fact that Bright is out of this event early on. This will be a battle for third between a couple of playoff drivers. Parker and Garcia is up front. Alexander Rowe about to receive a challenge from Andre Voronskis in the two. In just a moment, we're going to look back and try and find a couple of our other playoff contenders that are still running. Elijah Gilbert has kind of faded back. I don't see him in this lead pack. And I'm also curious about the 22 of Kat Batson. Because I know she made a tiny little bit of contact with the four of Ryan George, but I don't think it was enough to put her off the pace. We got a car coming off pit road here. That's the seven of Austin LaPlante. Unscheduled stop for him. One week after getting eliminated from the playoffs, not the run he was looking for here at Talladega. His teammate though, Matt McIntyre, gonna go for the lead off Baranskas. He's got some help from James Shelley, Zach Flickinger down low. 
It's actually dropped towards the tail end of the field here. There's Carter Friesen. We know he got involved in that wreck. He's off the pace in 34th. Daniel Olson just made a pit stop there in the 32 car, so he's way back in the field. Kyle Langland still with a lot of damage on his number 30. Cole Deaver we know was involved. Jay Jefferson was involved there back here. There's Cat Batson right now scored in the 27th position, riding behind the 78 of Charles Jackson. 92 of Joshua Hyatt just up ahead. I'm not really sure the 22 is off the pace. I think she might have gotten held up by some drivers that are damaged. Jackson, I think, got a slight piece of the wreck. It doesn't look like he's really off the pace. These drivers running around 185, 186. There's Elijah Gilbert way back here, battling with Angel Navarro. This is a battle, I believe, for 24th as they're making their way by the lap machine of Austin LaPlante. Gilbert has actually lost touch with the lead draft. Lead draft cars are running between 190 and 191. I don't know if that's just because Gene Sanford's up in a group of cars or not. Hey, very important, James Shelley just led that lap, so he is the first playoff driver to lead a lap today, so he's got that bonus point. So very important for Shelley as he's trying to make it into his first Final Four appearance. And you gotta wonder, when are these drivers like Erickson, Rogers, that are right now up in the top five, when are they gonna have to come to pit road? Because they're gonna have to come to pit road a little bit earlier than everybody else since they stayed out under that yellow flag. Now, I don't know if we can base the green flag pit stops off of uh, the truck series race since it's different physics, but I do know the fuel window for the trucks was somewhere between, I think it was like seven, uh, well, no, what was it? It was like 15 to 17 laps. So if it holds true, we could see at least these drivers that stayed out somewhere on pit road within the next four to five laps and then probably about seven to nine laps for the drivers that came to pit road under that yellow flag. And I said before that, you know, if we went green the entirety of this race, we could end up seeing these drivers having to come to pit road in the closing stages of the race. My assumption is when they make this necessary final pit stop, they will be able to make it the rest of the way. So the money stop is going to be coming up here. Somewhere I would say around between laps maybe 18 to 20, maybe a little bit longer than that. Well, we didn't have traffic play a factor in the Last of Us Light Series race here yesterday, but it looks like it will play a factor in this one. Carter Freeze in the 39, maybe about half a straightaway ahead of the leaders, and then not too far ahead of the damaged car of Daniel Olson. They are fast being approached by the leader, Matt McIntyre. Patrick Curtis now moves up to third. Good run for him after he got eliminated from the playoffs last week. And then a couple of Fords, not teammates, but Ford drivers and playoff contenders. Juan Garcia, Diego Yepes working that inside line, trying to move to fourth and fifth, bypassing the 29 of Mark Davidson. Good run for Mark. He's been having a very struggling year as the leader has caught Carter Friesen's 39. He'll drive to the inside. And it looks like he'll make very quick work of the Smithfield Ford. Chloe Erickson, though, did not get to the inside. Now they're all bottled up behind Friesen. Top two are going to get away. Oh, caution is out. And that's a big break for drivers like Erickson and Rogers. Diego Yepes, who had all stayed out under that last caution. Oh, we got a wreck in the back there under pacing. Oh boy, and that looked like there might have been some playoff contenders in that one. Carson Gums in it, Mark Davidson, Gene Samfer, like Alex Gray. Oh, maybe we didn't have playoff drivers involved. But what brought out the cautions? The question. Oh, Elijah Gilbert in trouble there out of turn two. I don't know what necessarily brought the caution out though. But this is going to, I think, put these drivers now in the fuel window. They'll be able to make it the rest of the way when they come to pit road. Possibly. We'll have to wait and see. Let's take a look and see what brought out the caution. Matt McIntyre leads us under our second yellow flag of the day at Talladega. Well, I went back and I looked all around the track. And at the time that the lights came on on the pace car, nothing had happened to bring out the caution. So I don't know what they threw the caution flag for. And I'm a kind of a little ticked off because if they hadn't thrown the caution, we probably wouldn't have had this. This was a battle 
up somewhere around the seventh position. They were all, you know, behind Carter Friesen, but these guys are all slowing themselves down for this yellow flag that they just received. Chaser Juan Garcia rubbing doors with Ana Baranskas. They're both going to go up the track into Mark Davidson. This would not have happened had we not been under some f stupid phantom yellow flag. So Garcia, another playoff contender now with damage, and then watches everybody's trying to avoid. Phil Parker's going to get a piece there with the right front, getting into Mark Davidson. Carson Gum, the 99, nowhere to go. And then down on that inside line is Alex Gray in the 0. Gene Sanford, the 70. Gray nails the 29. Gene Sanford gets the left front into Carson Gum, then slides into the back of Andre Baranskas. Second car we've had flip over here today. The first was Jessica Miles, and now Mark Davidson. Looks like his day is done. And because of this stupid caution, who knows why it was thrown, but because of the stupid caution, we had two playoff contenders involved. I think we may actually have a third, because Elijah Gilbert there in the 66, I remember we saw, was involved in something. Cat Basson's just ahead of him. Let's see what happens here. This was coming down to turn two. Heather Gallant, our winner from Spring, or from a Bristol Dirt. Cat Batson's going to get into the back of her. Elijah Gilbert gets into the back of Batson. And then Charles Jackson gets into the back of his teammate. Gilbert spins him around. So Batson probably with a little bit more damage on the nose. Gilbert gets spun around. Then a little shot there into the left rear quarter panel from Angel Navarro. But kind of hard to not be disappointed in the NSRA officials throwing a caution for absolutely no reason. There was nobody sideways on the track. Nobody was slow in terms of, you know, going to be a hindrance to anybody. Why they threw the yellow, I have no earthly idea, but it causes this wreck, and that's uh, at least four of our playoff contenders with some damage in one, some way, shape, or form. Juan Garcia, Phil Parker, Cat Batson, and Elijah Gilbert. Let's go back for the restart. I think all of those chase contenders are going to be able to continue, but Garcia and Parker, they were looking like they could have been contenders for the win, and now they might be a little bit off the pace aerodynamically. So it'll be a bit of a jostled start here, but they did all come down pit road, which means that, according to my calculations, they are good to go on fuel. So if we go green to the end, these drivers have made the last pit stop they'll need to make today. Patrick Curtis, his team, getting it done on pit road. He got out ahead of Matt McIntyre, so McIntyre will restart second. Diego Yepes, still the highest running chase driver. He's in third. Quentin Moore in fourth. Chloe Erickson fifth. Then it's Rob Evans, Brooke Allen, James Shelley, Zach Flickiger, and Nick Gunther. So three of our playoff contenders restarting in the top ten. Austin LaPlante and Daniel Olsen, they both were on pit road during that last green flag run. They didn't have to come to pit road, but they were behind the pace car. So they will restart ahead of the race leader. Carter Friesen, a lap down in the 39, will restart on the inside line. I believe LaPlante and Olsen are on the tail end of the lead lap right now. Yes, they are. Out of the race after that last wreck, two more drivers in the garage area who took the biggest hits there in that wreck, and they are Mark Davidson and Alex Gray. Bear in mind, that wreck that we showed you the replay of did not bring out the caution. It was a wreck that was caused after the caution came out because drivers were trying to slow down for pacing. We have absolutely no idea why that second caution of the day was thrown, but uh, there was nothing on track from what I could see that warranted the caution coming out. So we mentioned three drivers of your playoff contenders restarting in the top ten. Let's find out where the other ones currently are at for this restart. Uh, Phil Parker, who looks like he might have a little bit of damage. He's restarting back in 16th, so we'll keep tabs on him. Cat Batson restarts in 17th. Elijah Gilbert in 21st as the green flag is back in the air. Juan Garcia restarts back in 27th. And if you're just joining us, our first caution of the day took out the points leader of the uh, second round of the playoffs, Eli Wright. He is out of the race in the 37th position, I believe, is where he finishes. Yes, indeed. Well, Patrick Curtis made very quick work of Carter Friesen and Daniel Olson, now trying to get by Austin LaPlante. Matt McIntyre with a big run here on the back bumper of his teammate, now going to switch lanes as he's going to try and take the race lead back away from Curtis. McIntyre was the leader coming back to the yellow flag, but lost a position on pit road, now trying to gain it back. Diego Yepes with a solid outing here today. He's been up in the top 10 most of the day. And let's not forget that in the first round of the playoffs, I guess he was kind of overshadowed by Eli Bright's two wins, but Diego Yepes 
was the highest finisher in the point standings that hadn't won during that round. So, I mean, he's been very consistent since the chase has begun. Rob Evans, the pole sitter, now into fourth place, and Zach Flickinger, who to me has been maybe the quietest driver in the playoffs so far. And usually it's that quiet driver that gets that fourth and final spot in the uh, race for the championship. So I would look at this 96 very carefully when we uh, head into our next upcoming races because I honestly think Flickinger, with the consistency he's had and how quietly he's done it, he could very well be one of those uh, drivers you wouldn't expect that'll be battling for the championship at Homestead, Miami. Right now at the front, though, it's a two-car breakaway. Matt McIntyre and Patrick Curtis. And they are side-by-side -side right now for the race lead, too, which is not necessarily a good thing for either driver because before, when they were single file, they were able to open up a little bit of a gap between themselves in third place. If they remain side by side, that pack behind them is going to catch them. Curtis trying to get clean air to the nose of his Nike Chevrolet. Now he'll probably try tucking back in the line on the back straightaway here. As Chloe Erickson, Zach Flickiger, Rob Evans, Diego Yepes try closing in. Here comes our winner from Bristol Dirt, Heather Gallant, now up to the eighth position. Actually, I think she's now in seventh as she got around Brooke Allen. Eighth now would be Jake Rogers, ninth Nick Gunther, and right now 10th place is under fire. Quentin Moore trying to take it from Brooke, trying to kick her outside of the top 10. Look up here at the front. We had a number of playoff contenders up inside the top 10. Even when we were going back green, there were three drivers with uh, playoff contigs in the top 10. Now we've only got two of them up here. Flickinger the 96, Yep has the 90, or the 19. This looks like if they remain where they are, they're going to have very good points days heading into uh, next week's race. Well, actually, I should say three weeks from now. It's actually going to be a while till we see the Pizza X Series drivers again. In three weeks, they are at Texas. So this is uh, going to give them a well-needed break for sure. And look at this. Like I said, they're side-by-side -side for the lead. That brings Erickson, Flickinger, Evans... Heather Gallant, Nick Gunther, and Diego Yepes up into this mix. Maybe Jake Rogers as well. And for Flickinger and Yepes, they want to win here so they can lock themselves into the final four at Homestead, Miami. Big run for Chloe Erickson. She's going to get it to the inside of Matt McIntyre, and she's going to move to the front with help from the 96 and the 88. Seven cars in this lead pack. We may have as many as nine if Yepes and Rogers can stay in the draft. Especially if these drivers up here continue to race double wide and now three wide for the fourth position as Gunther puts it way down low. Zach Flickinger, his win at Arizona, got him into the playoffs. Flickinger now trying to Pick up his second win of the season. Now Nick Gunther's going to move him out of the way, though. Gunther trying to pick up his second win of the season as a rookie. Just last week got eliminated from the playoffs. So far, only one driver this year has multiple wins. That's Eli Bright with three. Gunther trying to get his second. Got a number of drivers up here that are looking for their second. Patrick Curtis, I think, is one that's looking for his second. Heather Gallant, Rob Evans, Diego Yepes as well as the aforementioned race leader, Nick Gunther, who now is out in front. You've got nine drivers up in this lead pack. Then you go back here to this battle for 10th in this second group. Only playoff contenders I see in this group are Elijah Gilbert and Kat Batson. Nice come, oh, no, Phil Parker as well. Nice comeback for the 22. She's right now up to the 19th position. Remember last week at Auto Club where it was coming down to the wire for her to try and make it into the Elite Eight. Well, she's kind of doing the same thing here today, picking up as many spots as she can in the closing stages of this race. One driver that really faded back, and that's that car right there, James Shelley. He's back in 20th, about to be reeled in by this group of Baranskas and Joshua Hyatt. I don't know if he maybe got a little piece of the wreck that took place under that second caution or not, but he's way off the pace, it seems. There's Juan Garcia, damaged and off the pace. He also was involved in that wreck under the second yellow. He's back in 27th. And I believe that's uh, all of our playoff contenders. Is up front, Gunther. Continuing to show the way, trying to give Kev Shear Racing Tech what would only be their second win of the season. 
at McIntyre there in second place. McIntyre trying to get Michael Norman Motorsports, only their second win of the season. Their only win to date, Austin LaPlante's win at Dover. McIntyre was in the playoffs last year, this year, not been anywhere close to a playoff contention team as Chloe Erickson, same deal for her. She was in the final four for the championship back in season three. Rob Evans started on pole, still up here in the top five. Not very many drivers up here in this lead pack, nine in total, so I don't know if there's enough drivers to create the energy needed to get up there and battle for the race win with Nick Gunther. Erickson's going to have to be Matt McIntyre's best friend right now and not try stepping out of line for second place. So the two of them can try drafting up to the back of that 55. Look at them snaking their way down the front straight away. And right now it is going to come down between these nine drivers because 10th place Andrew Gonzalez is over five and a half seconds back. Actually six seconds back that time at the line. Gunther in clean air. And he's been able to hold about a car length and a half between himself and second place Matt McIntyre. I'm not sure Matt's got a car that's really that good to lead a group up to the back bumper of the 55. Erickson's going to step out of line on him. I think she realized the same thing. So maybe now if Erickson gets out here, maybe her car can cut the wind better more aerodynamically to try and get up to Nick Gunther. They're catching Kyle Langland in the 30. Let's see where they encounter him. This might slow the 55's momentum up just the least little bit. He's going to get stuck low, and Matt McIntyre is going to go around on the outside. Juan Garcia just had to make a pit stop. So that's not going to be a good points day for that chaser. And boy, did they get held up behind Langland. Matt McIntyre is gone with two laps to go. They're still caught up here, third place on back. That might allow that second group to catch these guys. Patrick Curtis is going to go around for third. Heather Gallant's going to move to fourth as Gunther and Evans really getting held up behind the 30. And Matt McIntyre, like I said, he is gone. But is he too far out? Erickson there in second. Curtis now in third. And this might be a group right here that might be able to pick these guys off one by one, but they've only got one lap to do it. Another slow car ahead. That's Carter Friesen in the 39. Don't know if they'll catch him before this is over. Matt McIntyre coming down to receive the white flag. One more lap around Talladega. Carson Gum was just on pit road. Unscheduled stop for the 99. He was damaged and off the pace. Matt McIntyre coming into this race found himself positioned in the 40th position in points. What is it I said top of the program? The driver that's running down in the point standing, struggling. Matt McIntyre fits that quota. He's trying to have Talladega's repertoire continue here today. He's going to catch that 39 in turn three. He'll go up topside. Second group trying to catch him, but I think they would have needed at least one more lap. Out of turn four for the final time, Matt McIntyre. He's going to have plenty of space back to second place, which is going to be three wide coming to the line. But Matt McIntyre is going to take the first checkered flag of the season for him at Talladega Super Speedway. Drag race for second. Curtis will get it at the line. Curtis, Flickinger, and Gallant three wide for second place. Flickinger was battling there to try and get a runner-up finish. He'll beat, still be the highest running playoff driver, but... Matt McIntyre, second win of the season for Michael Norman Motorsports, first win of the season for Matt McIntyre, and what a struggling year it's been. So great to see that car finally get back to victory lane. Obviously a silver lining in what's been a very dismal cloud of a season for the Liberty University Chevrolet, and you gotta go back to that pass that he made around the slower damaged machine of Kyle Langland. That was, I think, the race winning move. Apologize for my dogs barking in the background. Normal occurrence in most NSRA races, isn't it? Yeah. So Matt McIntyre with the victory. Patrick Curtis one week after getting eliminated from the playoffs. Solid outing in second. Zach Flickinger, he's going to find himself in a very good position heading into Texas in three weeks as he's the highest finishing chaser in third. Heather Gallant will get rookie of the race as she finishes fourth. And Chloe Erickson. This is probably the strongest performance we've seen out of that 46 in a long time this season. She's going to finish the day out in fifth. Jake Rogers, great run for him there in sixth. Diego Yepes will be the second highest running chaser as he'll finish in sixth. They were the only two 
talking about Flickager and Rogers to finish in the top 10 today. Nick Gunther, Rob Evans, Sky Commons, Andrew Davis, a whole bunch of rookies there, 8th through 11th. Cat Batson. Nice comeback finish for her as she was involved in our first caution. She's going to finish in 13th. Phil Parker, despite the damage he sustained, he's going to finish in a solid 14th place. 16th is going to be Elijah Gilbert. Then you look on down here, and these are some drivers that might find themselves in a little bit of trouble heading into uh, our race at Texas. James Shelley faded back in the closing stages to 23rd. Juan Garcia had to make that pit stop under that last green flag run. He finishes the lap down in 29th. And Eli Bright... Boy, the guy who came into this race with so much momentum. Two wins in the first round, three wins overall this season. Six bonus points heading into round two, and DNFs in the 37th position. So what are the points going to look like after this? I have no idea, but something tells me it's going to be very close between fourth and fifth place, that cut line to make it into the final four. None of our chasers won this race, so right now, all four drivers would have to make it in via points. We'll have to see what happens in the upcoming races at Texas and Rockingham before we find out the final four at Homestead, Miami. But Matt McIntyre with the win here today. Congrats to him on that. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give us a video like, subscribe to get part of the crew today. We have shown you your full fissure results. These are your rookie point standings and your overall point standings, as well as your playoff points heading into our race in three weeks. Race number two of round two at Texas Motor Speedway. We finish off this race weekend with the Hershey's Cup Series drivers at Talladega Super Speedway as they are going to be basically setting up for their next elimination race next week at Boston, which will be whittled down to their Elite Eight. And then next week, we've got the Last of Us Light Series. They're going to be racing at the short track of Gateway. And like I said, next week it will be at Boston, the second elimination race for the Hershey's Cup Series, a debuting track so you're not going to want to miss all that action. And then the following week, it's only the Trucks and Hershey's Cup Series, as the Trucks will be road course racing at their endurance race at Le Mans. Road course racing as well on tap for the Hershey's Cup Series drivers at Lime Rock. A lot of action still to come as we continue to try and determine our final four in the Trucks, Pizza Deck Series, and Hershey's Cup Series. Till then, I've been Seth Cole. You've been watching Production SRA, Offline Racing at its best.